Okay, today we're going to talk about sequences. So what is a sequence? A sequence is basically just a list of numbers in a specific order. And usually people write it like this. So a sub 1 is like the first term of the sequence, a sub 2 is the second term of the sequence, a sub 3 is the third term of the sequence, and so on and so forth. a sub n is the nth term of the sequence. Sometimes a sequence can be described by a formula, such as maybe a sub n equals to the square root of n. Sometimes it can be described just a list of numbers, such as maybe the number one half, one over eight, one over oops, one half. Let's, there's nothing wrong with the one over eight, but I'm gonna go ahead and put one over four, one over eight, one over sixteen, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, you, you know, sometimes when a uh, sequence is given to you as a formula, they might ask you, okay, find out what are the first few terms of that sequence. So for the first sequence there, the first term is the square root of 1. The second term would be the square root of 2. The third term would be the square root of 3, and so on and so forth. And for the sequence that is listed here, uh, you may want to find the nth term of the sequence. So maybe by looking at the first term of the sequence, we're just going to call it a sub 1. And then we're going to say, okay, well, that's 1 half. a sub 2 is 1 over 4. And then if you rewrite that, that's 1 over 2 to the second power. a sub 3. It's uh, 1 over 8, and that's 1 over 2 to the third power. A sub um, 4 is 1 over 16, and you can write that as 1 over 2 to the fourth power. And then from here, you can find out that the nth term of the sequence is 1 over 2 to the n. Another example of a sequence would be, I don't know, maybe something like, let's put it on the other side, uh, I mean on the other page. Um, a sub n equals to um, minus 1 raised to the n power like that. And you're like, okay, what is that? Well, a sub 1 is equals to minus 1 um, raised to the first power. And that would be negative 1. a sub 2 is minus 1 raised to the second power, and that would be 1. a sub 3 is minus 1 raised to the third power, and that would be minus 1, and so on and so forth. And so this time the sequence can be uh, written like this. The first term is minus 1, the second term is... Uh, 1, then minus 1, and then 1, and blah, 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 and the n term is minus 1, and raised to the n power, and then blah, blah, blah. Okay, when a sequence converges, there is a limit to that sequence, such as the following sequence. Suppose that we have the sequence 1 over n, and we want to see whether this sequence converges. So basically, to find out whether it converges, we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of this sequence, and you see right away that the sequence converges to 0 by putting n equals to infinity. Uh, on the other hand, if you take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of maybe something like minus 1 raised to the n power, then this limit does not exist. I'm going to use D and E for this, and it does not exist because the, the sequence bounces from minus 1 and 1 and minus 1 and 1 and minus 1 back and forth, and there is no unique limit. So in this case, we say that the sequence diverges. So 
uh, this sequence a sub n equals minus 1 raised to the n power diverges whenever there's a limit we say that the sequence converges uh, another example of a sequence would be maybe the sequence that we talked about a while ago such as the square root of n and in this case when you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence you see that the limit of this is infinity so again we say that a sub n equals to the square root of n diverges but in a special way it diverges to infinity and so on and so forth okay whenever you have sequences there's many ways to find out you know whether the sequence converges or diverges and sometimes people um, I don't know they relate these sequences to functions because they are really um, I'm gonna say discrete functions so, like for example, the sequence a sub n equals 1 over n can be related to this function f of x equals to 1 over x. And taking the limit as n approaches infinity of this sequence, which is equals to 0, is similar to taking the limit as x approaches infinity of this function, which is uh, 1 over x. which is also zero. In other words, um, the sequence is equals to the function for x equals to n, where n is just the set of positive integers. So the domain of the sequence is just the set of positive numbers rather than um, being a continuous function. However, there's going to be like a theorem that you can, that if you can show that a function has a limit and the function is equal to a sequence for x equals to n, then the sequence will also um, converge to that same number. So in this case, you say, you know, um, f of x equals to 1 over x, the limit as x approaches uh, infinity of 1 over x is equal to 0. So, because f of x is uh, f of n is equals to a of n, where a of n is equals to one over n, um, the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n is also zero. That's one way to find the limit. And over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put what the sequence is. So I'm gonna put n here, and I'm gonna put a of n here. This sequence is basically follows this function. Uh, the function f of x equals to 1 over x is sort of like this curve that kind of goes like this. And the sequence is just the set of points from 1, x equals, uh, n equals 1, 2, 3, and it's this point. Come on. This point, this point, this point. And blah blah blah. So the sequence is just the set of these isolated points. It's not equal to the whole function. It just equals to those points. But as you can see, the function goes to zero. The sequence goes to zero. As n goes to infinity as well, because the function is equal to the sequence for n equals one, two, three, blah blah blah. All right. Sometimes um, people uh, want to see whether a sequence converges or diverges. Uh, there's many ways, so for example, it depends on the sequence. So let's say you want to find out whether this uh, sequence is convergent or divergent, and we have something like a sub n equals to cosine of n over, uh, oops, not n, um, 2 over n, and the question is, is this sequence convergent or divergent? 
Well, and you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence, this is the same as taking the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine of 2 over n. And this is kind of cheating, but the cosine is sort of like a continuous function, and you can take the, the limit inside of the cosine like this. Uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 over n. So, because the limit of 2 over n as n approaches infinity is equal to 0, this is cosine of 0. And therefore, this is a sequence that converges to 1. Sometimes uh, you use something that is called the squeeze theorem for sequences. And basically, it goes like this. If you have um, a sequence that goes like this, and then another sequence that goes like this, and then you have a sequence that is in the middle, and the sequence from the top and the sequence from the bottom uh, converge to the same limit, then the sequence from the in the middle converges to that limit as well. So basically that means that if an is less than or equals to bn and bn is less than or equals to cn and the limit as n approaches infinity of an is the same as the limit as n approaches infinity of cn and if this is equals to L, then the limit as n approaches infinity of um, Bn is equals to L as well. So, for example, if you wanted to find out whether this sequence cosine square of n divided by 2 to the n converges or diverges? Well, first of all, cosine square of n is bigger than or equals to 0 and smaller than or equals to 1 and if you multiply by 2 to the n as n goes to infinity then this is cosine square of n divided by 2 to the n is less than 1 over 2 to the n power like this. And the limit as n approaches infinity of 0 is equal to 0. And the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 2 to the n is 0 as well. So the limit of the sequence um, cosine square n divided by uh, 2 to the n is equal to 0 as well by the squeeze uh, theorem. This is called the squeeze theorem. Sometimes people call it the sandwich theorem. All right. Uh, sometimes uh, you find out whether a sequence converges or diverges by just uh, taking the limit of that sequence and using the laws of limits and the laws of limits for sequences uh, are pretty much similar to the laws of limits um, of functions as um, a x approaches infinity so for sequences it would be the limit as n approaches infinity so for example this sequence which is n plus 1 divided by 3n minus 1, uh, the limit of this sequence as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 divided by 3n minus 1 is the same as the limit as n approaches infinity. You basically divide everything by n and you get 1 plus 1 over n divided by 3 minus 1 over n. And then this limit is just one third because the one over n and, and top and bottom goes to zero as n approaches infinity. Um, let's take a look at this sequence. Um, cosine of pi n divided by 2. 
and we're going to see whether this sequence converges or diverges. This time I'm going to go ahead and find the first few, uh, few, first few terms, 